Now, the impact of power sector in economic drive is uh, our focus for this afternoon. For every 1% increase in electricity supply, an economy is expected to grow by 3.94%. Well, inversely, a 1% increase in regrowth domestic product leads to a 0.34% increase in electricity supply consumption. Now, Vivasa. This is what we are going to be looking at and of course we have a business expert who is also someone that is uh, vast as far as the clinical world is concerned he's pharmacist benjamin Osasere. thank you for joining us pharmacist thank you so much it's always a pleasure to be a dpo all right now looking at the opening uh for every one percent increase in electricity supply an economy is expected to grow by 3.94 percent so does it mean that power really have a major role to play as far as economic drive is concerned? You know, I've always said it in this program that um, people will be wondering, why is I keep hitting on power, mm. electricity? Why? Because um, when you look at a civilized society, without power, nothing will work. Mm. The entire, the entire uh, economy will be grounded. So power is a key setup in any striving economy. So you can just imagine the statistics you just read. Mm. Now imagine if we have a steady power supply. Imagine what, what will that happen. That is up to forty percent. What will happen to our economy? Mm. You see, it will automatically shoot Nigeria as a nation to one of the top striving economy in the world. Power. Mm. And is it that fixing our power supply is a rocket science? No. That, that, that's a big question. Who will be, who will be <laughs> diving uh, into that uh, uh, as we progress? Okay. Mm. So fixing power is going to boost the economy in so many areas. From the small scale business, the SMEs and all of that, the business will be striving very well. Mm -hmm. So probably as we go into it, we're going to look how this can be done. So now quickly, before we now get to how it can be done, let's quickly um, appraise the rate of power supply currently in the nation. Uh, do you think it's commensurate with what Nigerians are expecting? Far from it. Do you know that um, Nigeria supply, Niji, that is currently in a kind of a political upheaval mm -hmm. right now. We supply them power and they enjoy good power supply more than us that supply them power. So that's to tell you that something is wrong somewhere. It's not only Niger. There are some other African countries we supply that them That benefit power. from Nigeria? Yes. Even like Benin, Benin Republic. Benin, just close by here. We supply them power. And I was opportune to visit them early this year. Do you know that the three days I spent there, they never blinked their light? For once. For once. And supply, for what you said, is coming we, from us. Yes, it's coming from us. Mm. I slept throughout the night with light. During the day, the light remained stable for three good days. I witnessed this myself. So if somebody have told me, I would not have believed. So the question is, how then, can then we what, 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 what is missing in the country? If we are supplying some of these uh, countries and um, the producers are not enjoying the product, <laughs> then something is wrong somewhere. Very big something is wrong somewhere. So what could be the lacuna? We all know it's corruption. Now let's talk about it. It's corruption. Let's hit it. So you find that every facet of our economy is, is, is riddled in corruption. Mm. Just imagine the power, so, the power sector. Does it not baffle you that we is like, is like you, you don't have food. I supply you food, but my children are starving. Mm. It's an irony. It's, 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 it's a big hypocrisy. Now, looking at what I'm um, hearing in the news headline, we, we want to go and solve, uh, solve a, a, a political upheaval, mm -hmm. a form of insecurity in a G. 
whereas in our own backyard, the, the entire nation is, is, is in total chaos. Mm. No, no, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> let's not think towards that direction. So, so <laughs> it, it, just, it, let's stick to the talking point now. Very, very. Mm. So, I'm just trying to to show you the hypocrisy that is happening mm. here in this country. And and those looking out, those looking out from the outside, they yeah. are mocking us. They are mocking so, us. So, of, of what benefit will constant power supply? Okay, now um, add um, value to our economy. Okay, let's let's illustrate this very well. I've always said that if Tinubu should use President Tinubu should use his four years to fix power, Nigerians would be so glad. You should forget that aspect. That, that is the worst case scenario. If he should use his, the first tenure, four years to fix power, Nigerians will remember him forever. So what happened to the health sector? Agricultural sector. Uh, you see, if if you should so many you know, other sectors should, that need attention. If you should focus more on that on power, on power and fix power, mm. many other things will begin to fall in place on their now, own. Let me do some little analysis for you. Do you know why the PMS is holding this nation down severely? That every facet of the economy is affected mm. is because of over dependence on it. Take, for example, household usage. Every evening, people go and get fear to power their generator. Just to have, just to have light at home. So those who have big uh, mechano, those diesel generators, they will buy diesel. Now, imagine if there is constant power supply. Automatically, the law of economics will come into play, the law of supply and demand. Mm. Now, if we remove household usage of PMS, do you know that you would have reduced demand in a very drastic proportion? And that, and that will in a way affect the price cost of purchase? Yes. The price, see, we can force the price of PMS down itself if we begin to look at other alternative power supply. Take, for example, solar. Even the world now, they are trying to, you know, they, they want to go into a green power supply. Mm. You know, energy that does not have any cost implication in the environment. The world are advocating for that. Now, if the federal government, in two ways it can be done. If the federal government can import those solar accessories into the nation at a subsidized rate, mm. automatically, you, a common man, can afford a solar power supply, which is an alternative to power, to electricity. And it does not have any effect. Now, if you, if you, if you are trying to get power from generator, you know the emission of carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. what it does to the environment. We have had many experiences with people who have died from inhaling these things. Several, several stores. Several. Mm. Now, if that is done, you know, maybe every house you are, you are able to afford solar power. You have removed the demand for electricity, number one. You have re removed the demand for PMS to power generators. Many companies use PMS to mm. run their business. Automatically, that's why I told you, it will reduce it drastically, the demand for PMS. Automatically, it will force the price down. Mm. The law of economics, you can't change it. You can play politics with any other thing. You can't play politics with economics. Now, we are suffering it because of the negligence and the incompetence so of, you're, of our leaders so you're over saying, you're, the years. So you're saying this present administration they should take the first four years just to focus on uh, reviving the power sector? I said that is the worst case scenario. Mm. For a good government that knows what it's doing, a year six months should be enough to fix it. Let's assume the worst becomes the worst case. Okay, they've been be trying, you know, trying to fix other setup too, and it not took them four years to fix power. Don't you think that would be a big booster to the economy? Surely it will. Now, when you, you are so much dependent on something, 
and the availability of that thing becomes scarce. What happens to the price of that commodity? It will hike up. Now, when many persons are no more going for it, few are going for it, the price will drop. There is a lot of economics. So if that can be done, do you know that there are so many private hospitals that run on either diesel or PMS? Look at the cost implication of that. Imagine there's full power supply. Because there are some medical equipment you cannot allow one blinkage of, of power. So at the end of the day, it's have a way of um, affecting the, 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 the patients, what they pay. So by the time power is stable now, yes. we, we might not have to pay much to assess good health Of healthcare. course. It's part of the running cost. It's part of it. Okay, what about other small-scale business? SMEs all over. And do you mm. know that SMEs contribute 61% of our GDP? Okay, we'd we'll like to quickly take a short break. Uh, we'll return back. We'll, we'll extract the front line of this discussion. Don't go nowhere. It's still business this week where we're talking business and don't forget uh, this program gives you the opportunity to showcase your businesses your goods and services on this platform all you need to do is to just walk down to our corporate office at Airport Road Glass House Reading City and uh, meet with the commercials department they will tell you how to come on board and if you're close to the communication village here in it goes our local Benin just walk down to our commercials representative they'll tell you how to be part of the program. Now, it's also an audience participatory program. I will be displaying the phone number where you can have the opportunity to uh, lend your voice and talk to us. Let us know how you're battling or how you're surviving or how Pi is treating you in your business uh, as far as it's concerned. The number will be displayed on your screen and we still have our guest with us in the studio, pharmacist Benjamin Osasere. Now, before we went on the break, you were uh, atomizing how uh, the power sector can be revitalized and uh, how it can have a, a way of cushioning the effect of the subsidy remover. And do you think in all NST that government is actually interested in fixing power? That's a good question. From uh, the body language of uh, President Tinubu mm -hmm. and his administ administration, mm -hmm. I can see that <laughs> It's so funny, I've been expecting to hear something in this line. I've not heard anything at From all. From the speech I've and uh, most of the things we've had so the, far. The only thing I'm hearing is that they want to share money. They want mm. to share money. Now, you, 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 you came out the other day and said, Nigeria has been able to save one trillion naira. And you are planning on sharing this money. People are saying it's palliative. I, I don't believe in those things they are saying. Palliative, palliative. Palliative for who? They are using, they are using palliative a kind of to justify sharing money to themselves. Mm. Now, Buari did something like this, palliative. It never got to the poor man. But the, the distributions were made. Uh, the traders' money that was chaired by the vice president, then vice president, Yamil Sibanjo. Do you know of anybody uh, that is close to you in the neighborhood who benefited well, from well, the, there, there was a campaign that went from, from, from one the state, money. went from one state to another. What I'm expecting, I think he has advisors, right? Mm. Can one of them not understand that power? Is a key to our economy. So, so you're equally saying all these monies that they are trying to put together to uh, cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy, they should channel it to the to power sector? It may not even be everything. Mm. If half of it is used judiciously, sincerely, in all hon honesty, our power can be fixed. Now, another way power can be fixed is to force the disco to provide this power. How? The federal government can also use some of this money they are saying palliative, palliative. 
Let them use it to acquire meters and meter every home and see if the discos will not be forced to supply power. Because if they don't supply, they would not make money. Okay. Are you seeing it? Because the, the issue of um, having um, um, the meters now, apart from meters, the other one, the, the one they subscribe to, that household have not gotten access to, is another issue. So, so apart from having meters, meter every house, instead of giving estimated bill. Now, estimated bill is another issue that Nigerians are battling with. You don't have constant power supply for 30 days. At the end of the day, you're giving some kind of estimated bill that is not reasonable. And, and you know that that's discouraged business. If I'm running a business, and at the end of the month, I'm not giving meter, I've tried to acquire meter, the process and the holders of it, I'm discouraged. Then at the end of the month, I'm being given estimated bills in thousands of naira. Automatically, you're trying to kill me. So what happened to prepared, uh, prepared meters? And I heard that they are prepared meters, but they've been hidden. You think so? I have heard. They are prepared meters. They've been hidden. And what those Nepal officials do is to sell it to the highest bidders. No, you, you don't that, have, you, that, you that, have accurate that information. Is, that is another corruption in his own. Mm -hmm. That is another corruption. But you have not independently verified this, this well, claim. Well, we all know what is happening. We all no, know I what is happening. I don't know. So let, no. me, let me quickly explain more on why it is important that meter should be provided. For me, no Nigerians should pay for meter. Why? Give every home meter. The federal government can come in, provide meters for, for every home. Then as they are subscribing, buying their NEPA bill, you can be deducting from it to service the payment of that meter. And that will be going to the federal account. Hmm. Wouldn't that create another kind of lapses again, in a way? Like, like what? Like it's, like, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul. No. The meter that was provided, the federal government provided it. Mm -hmm. They spent money to, to acquire those meter. The discos are to fix, install them. Now, you and I who have received those meters, as we are paying for our light bees, buying the card, a certain amount can be deducted straight to the federal account. Like a kind of a repayment okay. for the meter that was so given. So the, the repayment plan will be inculcated into your monthly subscription? Even if it should take 10 years, it can be done. And that will go a long way to solve power problem. Okay. Now, if you bring that in, you bring the PMS issue in, you find that the price of PMS will go down. When you also add the solar alternate power supply, the fuel price will go down. It will crash. Okay. Now, if we, if we also talk about the refineries, why are we talking about these things? We're talking about the refineries. We are still, it still boils down to how to improve the business, the mm. economy of, course. of our nation, mm. power. If the, we have four uh, refineries in this, in this nation, we have the Warren Refinery, the Potter Court, and the Cardona, and one other one. Now, if they can be functional, mm. operating to its maximum capacity, it's going to force the price of where to go down. Because when you have excess production, you, you have enough for your home use, then you can export. Mm. But when you don't have enough for your home use, you have your problem. Uh, we, we're, still, we're still trying to look at it together. If, if we are actually supplying some other nation's power, I wouldn't have enough to use. Let's leave the issue of oil first. <laughs> and speak to the issue. Uh, we at least I'm sure of Niger. Yeah. You just told me now that we're giving Benin. I'll try to confirm that in other African countries. Okay. If Niger Republic, yeah, at least we've been there one, one or twice for programs back then uh, when I was in the dot. Uh, you go there, you see constant power supply. Th that is why. Now, at the end of the day, the producers of the product, they are suffering. It's an irony. Uh, we know areas in the nation where kids that were born 15 years ago, they don't know how electricity power supply look like. 
the grow up meeting generators or alternative source. So what would the government tell such locality at this point? So the, 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 the point here is, it's not that if we want to have 24 hours light, we cannot have it. No, it, it seems like it's impossible now. No, is it possible? It's, it's so, so, so easy. How, how? What, what are the measures? It's so easy. Mm. Do you know that there are some, there are some places in this Bini city, they almost have like 24 hours light. With the Osiomo power? Is that what? With the Osiomo power. Is it the Osisioma power now? Which one now? No, no, no. I, 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 I will just mention, do you know this evidence? Yes. There was a time mm. those people enjoy almost 24 hours light. I lived there once. So where is their supply coming from? So the point I'm, why I'm relating that example is to tell you that it is possible for us to have 24 hours almost light. Almost 24 hours. It is possible. If nations we are supplying, they have 24 hours light. Why can't we? Let's to tell you there's corruption somewhere. Mm. Somebody is benefiting from the fact that we don't have constant light. So is privatization a problem? No, no, I wouldn't say that. Now, take for example, there are big politicians who are major importers of generators and diesel engines into this country. They are major importers. Now, do you think, and they, they are in politics, do you think these people would ever want Nigeria to have 24 hours light? Because mm. automatically their business will crumble. If you have 24 hours light, you don't need generator. In the Western world, they, had, they don't use generators. It's in remote areas and in, in, in cases of emergency, remote areas that they, they have need for it. So if Nigeria can feed power, mm. automatically... All the cabas that are involved in generator importation, their business. Now, let, let me take you to Ninja State. In Ninja State, where you have the Shiroro Dam, where you have the Kainji Dam, uh, with this other one that they are building in Zungeru. There's a place called Zungeru after Mina. There's a route from Mina to Zungeru. They are building a, power, uh, um, a dam there too. It was inaugurated by Good Luck's Jonathan administration also. Now, 15, 20 years ago in Ninja State, be that to be precise. Uh, they don't know what generator is because they have constant power supply. But I, I can bet you they, they hardly see light these days. Hmm. So how do we now balance the equation? Because still from that Kainji Dam, some of these neighboring countries are getting supplies from Kainji. From Shiroro Dam, Abuja gets supply from Shiroro Dam. In fact, the whole of the federal capital territory and some part of Nasarawa state feeds from Shiroro and the locals in Shiroro and uh, Mina, Axis, and all that route, they don't see light. Uh, before you respond to that, we have someone on the line. Let's see um, what the person has to contribute. Then we'll return back to you. We'll come back to you in a GV. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, hello, good afternoon. Thank you for calling us. What's your name and where are you calling from? Okay, um, Mr. Rafael from Isio, I'm very sure you have constant power supply. Absolutely not. We do not. Go ahead and talk to us. Yeah, because, for example, now I've been running generator, and this is a serious issue, you know. It's a serious issue on my pocket, on my account. So there's no way business will try in such an environment where half of the problem is wasted on, you know. So what, what kind of business are you into, Raf? And you definitely need constant power supply to and drive some business. I would love to know that with power, there's going to be instant development and improvement of the economy. Okay. So I wonder why it's not obvious enough. You know, but then you see. All right, thank you so much, Raf, for um, seeing you. Now, quickly, I asked the question, and Raf is trying to ask. It's, it's a form of question, too. So quickly react. You see, you, we've, we've discussed this before. Mm -hmm. It still boils down to corruption. People are not being accountable. Now, you said uh, two decades ago, those houses enjoy constant life. Constant. At so least what, I, I schooled in Niger State. What happened? Mm, is it that the candy down is bad? Is it that the... Shiroro, Shiroro you talked if, about if, is no more functioning? 
apart from the um, insecurity that they've been experiencing in some of those places, she always existed. Kainji Dam is, in fact, Kainji Dam is one of the best as far as African nation is concerned. And I bet you, if those things were faulty, I don't think we'll be able to supply Niger light and uh, Benin Republic light. So they are still so very now, functional. Let, let, let's hear from this person. They will now talk of how to tackle corruption since it's a clog in the uh, wheel of progress. Hello, good afternoon. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. And my name is Apollo. I'm calling from Mojuki. All right, go ahead and talk to us. Okay. All right, thank you. Now, for how long have you been battling with a power outage in your area? How long? You have not seen it at all. Six months. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> so, you can imagine that. And still in this same country, I told you before, there are some places you go to, they enjoy almost 24 hours light. If I'm wrong, let somebody call and, me. And, and these persons are still paying bills. And you see, they will bring estimated billing in thousands. And you, you, you can count the number of days you got light from them. But at the end of the month, they will bring the bills in thousands. So privatization didn't help the, the, the system? It would have helped. The corruption is, is just killing everything. So how do we now take corruption out of the way? Because all your response and uh, everything we've been talking about since we began, it's centered and hitting back on corrupt system. Okay, now uh, see how we can tackle it. I heard at a time that the government provided meters. How true is it? Prepared really? meters? Prepared meters. Mm. And someone also told me that as we speak, there are meters that are locked up in warehouses. In the country? In this or, state. Or outside the country? In this state. Mm. Now the question is... And it's not getting to the end users. What is happening? Why are those metal locked up? Why did they not distribute them to those who need it? Why is it that someone will need meter? You you you'll be scared if you give money to the wrong person, you may not see your meter. And you may not get your money. You may not get your money. You have the money. You need meter. They'll tell you if you go through the due process. For the next three, six months, you will not see meter. And you have paid. And you have paid. It happens. Uh, we must look at this corruption quickly. Uh, so we're going to get to when we are wrapping up. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. I see you there, over there. We are doing fine. And of course, we'd like to know your name and where you're calling us from. I'm calling from the name, from the name Metropolis, yeah. What's your name? Okay, IK, go ahead. We are listening. In the terms of this power generation you are talking about in your studio there. Yeah. In like our area here, you can just give the right to earn it, earn it, earn it, be down to the house. They will not even generate any light like to the community mm -hmm. So, okay. I don't know how, I don't know how they usually work this day. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, IK. What well, well, the truth is, it's painful um, to pay for things uh, you are not really getting. Service that was never rented. Yes, it, it's painful. It's like going to the market, you buy full stuff, you pay and you return home empty <laughs> without those stuff. <laughs> so, so the question is, mm. this is not an isolated case. Mm -hmm. I've experienced this too. And many other persons listening to us. So, so what, what's your experience? Ah, well, like uh, in, in our vicinity, we used to receive uh, huge bills. And if you can't try the month, we may just see light maybe three or five times. That's not possible. In a month? It's possible. For 30 days. And if the light should come, sometimes it, the voltage will be so low 
it is not steady, you know, stuff like that. So what should government do to arrest corruption? Now, we, we've seen that the discourse has a lot, they have a lot of questions to answer. Okay, we would like to get an authority from them uh, so that we can look at this issue again holistically, get representative from them. Remember, while we're discussing this, I'm actually interested on the economic implication of, course. of this. That's the major uh, And discussion. the only way we can face this light issue, it has to come from above. Like this tenable administration, let them look into power holistically. Let them mm. look into it. And drastic action should be taken. Okay. Um, Not as business as usual. All right. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. We can hear you. All right, we lost the call there. The number to call is displayed on your screen right now. Uh, 80 0300 that's the contact to call let's see if we can just do one two three calls then we'll return back and call it a wrap hello good afternoon uh, mr kelvin go ahead and talk to us Okay. So, Thank so you. Yeah, we're well with you. Uh, so these things, they are things that they are allowed to happen. But you send your child out, go and buy me something. When he comes back, he doesn't bring that thing. He doesn't bring what you call him and question him. <laughs> so you see, in our government, mm. we will tell somebody, go and do this. Well uh, empowered. And then the, the result, I don't want to ask. Okay, let's take that. Let, 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 let's take that as your uh, final submission. Nobody will ask. That's what we are asking. In, in 2021, mm. based on uh, information available, about 1.5 billion US dollar was invested into Port Harcourt refinery. 2021. Can we leave refineries alone? The, the, I'm driving somewhere. Yeah, drive us there now. Drive us there because we need because to wrap up. The refinery is also is connected to the economy. Of course. What happened to that money? Why was the refinery not fixed? Last year, they promised that the Portacourt refinery will be fixed by December last year. Tinibu has come again yes, to yes. promise December again. Mm -hmm. So, so it, could be that, that? It, it, it could be that it's a, a kind of a, the previous money that we put into, they want to now put it to work. <laughs> Let, let's, should, we, should we see it like that? Should <laughs> well, we take it from that angle? Well, let's, let's believe it <laughs> may be so. Yeah, it could be that some of those monies that have been hanging, the contractors now. Uh, if I, you need to walk away from your TV set, please. Please, you need to uh, turn down the audio volume on your TV set. Or better still, just take a walk away from your television set uh, so that we can have a clear signal from your end. We begin to wrap up now. No, I, I want to say that Nigerians should be ready. Mm. In fact, we are already crying when the battle has not started. We are so already crying. With what Nigerians are going through, you are saying it's not. It has not started. It's just the beginning. The effect, the real effect, has not come yet. That's why the government, this, this the government, the government might need more time. Don't you think? Nigerians so? should be ready. When I mean ready, I. We, we, it's only God that would help us. Mm. Only God. Because well, let's see if we can quickly uh, take this call. It's going to be the last call on the program. Hello, good afternoon. Please, you need to turn down the audio volume on your television set. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you loud and clear now. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Good Luck. I'm calling from Edward Idaho State. Okay, welcome to the program. Quickly talk to us. Good luck. We're wrapping up now.
There's a lot of fuel there. Then they look, I think I think several um, almost close to about uh, 50 something tankers was low with fuel. But here they are taking our fuel to other countries, mm. to so many other places. <laughs> to work and with Nigeria here, yeah, they are suffering for the fuel. Okay, well. Um, the refinery is not our major focus this afternoon. <laughs> you know, our viewers have a way of forming their opinion based yeah. on response. Yeah. And that's why I try to take you away. Okay. Each time you take <laughs> us to the refinery, I try to push you away. Uh, so we will not have to uh, form their opinion based on what we're talking. We're actually looking at the power sector yeah. and how reviving the power sector will impact the economy drive. Yes, yes. Let's take your final word. So my, my final word is... Um, with this present administration, I don't see any hope in sight. Hmm. I don't see any hope in sight. Do you know why I say so? Why? Because I'm scared now. We, we've been able to save one trillion naira, one trillion within the, and within the, the first the, two months. And the present administration is telling us that he wants to share the money. That is what I can see. You see. So the money will not the, go round. They have are you are, what, what's your fear? I'm coming. They have made so much noise that whatever they are saying, I cannot hear it anymore. What they have just told us that they want to share the money that's within your, themselves. Is that what you are saying? Or does, are, you, are you telling us this is what the government is saying? Or this is your See, opinion? The government have always had a trust issue. Mm. Right from time immemorial. They have never said something and you see them go with it and eventually what they've said, the promises they make, get to the poor masses. Never. Well, the president just got on board. Eight and we have less than six months in December. And it's just barely two months in office. Uh, well, I'm afraid this is how far we can go on the show this afternoon. Thank you so much for always coming around. Thank for you. Benjamin. Like I said, we'll see how to bring an expert and um, representative from this discourse. Uh, we can have a robust uh, conversation uh, so that we can forge uh, ahead. As far as our past sector is concerned, my name is Daniel Price. What's up, Do have yourself a blessed weekend ahead. Bye for now.